Zane. I found it. It's good to see you again, old friend. I thought I'd lost you, too. I've been awaiting death. Biblical Baldy Dash and a future blade meld together in director Johnny Pendragon's bizarre blood type B movie, Zane the Vampire God. A new 2020 release that brings together Adam and Eve's marked son Cain and Lilith, mother of the vampires, as king and queen of the eternal blood thirsting lineage. Earth seems to be threatened by the upcoming blood moon, which only appears in thousand of years cycles. And it is a time where King Cain is able to grow even stronger or be killed by one of his own descendants, also bearing the mark of Cain. A young guy named Titus bears the mark and along with his girlfriend, Jocelyn, they get drawn into the world of the contemporary cult-like vampires. In a dystopian-like landscape, torn from Mad Max beyond Thunderdome, as things take an odd Tina Turner for the worse, for them when Cain and his toothy cohorts come a-calling. Who can save them? Was Zane the vampire god? Fits the bill and has the look, appearing on the horizon from the future and right out of a rock set video. A nomadic world walker who definitely has the look and instantly grabs the attention with his black robe rags, arm gauntlets and metal glove attire. Back adorned with two crossed battle axes, and looking like a cool combo of Doctor Doom and Blade. He even has a metal mask that has sentience talking to him like a mystic mage. Great entrance and a high point to the movie's makeup. An early scene shot from above, looking down upon Zane, slowly wandering amidst a canyon of high rising rocks, is wonderfully realised and has attention-grabbing potential for what may lie ahead. But sadly, Zane the Vampire God soon proves that the sum of its parts are better than the sum of its whole. Talk about a bridge over troubled water. This feels like it was dreamt up by Paul, Simon and their artistic daft uncle. The story an environment is almost incoherent and banal with equal dire measure. The dialogue is wooden and delivered like a speak and spell taught dialect teacher to its amateur at best cast of actors. The sound has an annoying post applied echoey resonance that just takes you out of the film and any credibly enjoyable moments that it does provide. Zane's character is by far the most interesting part of the movie, along with some extremely well done story filling animated sequences that do add a solid watchability factor with their inclusion. The misplaced in time anachronistic shenanigans though are just far too incohesive to even garner worthwhile effort to get on board with, and it just a couple of minutes shy of a two-hour duration, the film is at least an unnecessarily arduous half an hour too long to bear with. This truly is a case of 
B-movie bad vamped up to terrible. A 3 out of 10 viewing mark of pain that is just too surreal to make any sense of sober. Perhaps director Johnny Pendragon can spend some future nights around a table with his crew and call upon Merlin to magic up some Lady Luck from the lake with better ideas going forward. Here's hoping he takes up the gauntlet and strikes back with better success in times to come. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.